Case's already rough return from his drug trip is further hampered by being arrested. By a trio of Turings, actually. Those who specifically deal with the threat of free artificial intelligences. And Wintermute's only way to continue its plan is to spring Case using a microlite and a robot. Case is happy to not be jailed or executed, but he's unsure about all of this, and is thinking of just grabbing Dixie Flatline and making a run for it. Interestingly, it's not Wintermute's leverage, the toxin sacks, that motivates Case to remain, but it's Dixie's comments and Case's own professional curiosity about the Chinese program, which makes him keep going. Learning that the way it works isn't brute force like would be implied, but rather to kind of approach so unthreateningly that it gradually merges with and takes down the ice. Wintermute arrives to explain what they're dealing with, essentially a lock with two keys. One is the Chinese program that Case is employing. The other is that bust from the Finn story, which has to be told a certain word at a certain time in order to unlock it. That will be Molly's job. Wintermute doesn't know the word, though, and interestingly, can't know the word. It's incapable of remembering even if it's told. This section of the book now brings up questions related to humanity and intelligence. The Turing see Wintermute as an existential threat if it were ever to be unshackled. To help it is to sell out the species. Yet the power structure that allows the Turings to do what they wish is based upon money. Case states that to him, power is always meant corporate power, because the corporations truly have influence. And they don't seem to realize how much money is being thrown around by Tessier Ashpool, whom it could be argued are becoming something inhuman themselves. Wintermute gives Case the memory of the wasp's nest, full of the dead remnants of creatures at various stages of development, to serve as a stomach-turning metaphor for the Tessier Ashpool family. But of course the Turings have all been artificially de-aged to be mistaken for teenagers, so this kind of manipulation is likely nothing that they would object to, while they clearly fear Wintermute. Case's interactions with Wintermute through the SimStim have removed any fear that he might have of the AI, at least as far as its nature as an AI goes, though he clearly respects what it can do. For example, attacking the Turings with a microlite and a gardening robot to save its agent. It could be argued this shows the reason to fear freeing Wintermute, since even shackled, it kills three people. But then again, would it be any better if it had been Tessier Ashpool controlling them? The theme likewise comes in with the Dixie Flatline, whom Case sees as his old mentor despite the fact that he's a rom construct, and is disturbed at reminders of this fact. The intellectual knowledge of Dixie's true nature doesn't override Case's gut reaction to him. But then, Case prefers the Matrix to reality, prefers a world on his terms rather than the one that is. This dovetails with the problem now with Armitage. Wintermute warns Case that Armitage is losing it, that Corto is starting to come through. They're doing the mission more and more without his aid now. Molly is still on task, sharing a personal story along the way, opening all of the entrances that Wintermute can't. It can do much but there are some things that only human hands can do. For instance, use the key that Molly locates thanks to Wintermute's direction, having spotted it fall 20 years ago and arranging for a child to find and hide it for Wintermute to use later, demonstrating the long game that this is. But Cordo finally breaks through the Armitage facade. He's been speaking to Wintermute, but rather than appearing as the Finn like Kay sees him as, Cordo sees General Gerling who was responsible for Screaming Fist. In fact, his mind has so deteriorated, Cordo is convinced he and Case are even now on that mission, in imminent danger, and that Cordo will need to eject and survive so that he can let people know what happened here. In the end, he's ejected into space, thanks to Wintermute. This development is worrying for several reasons. First, the immediacy for Case is that Armitage was supposed to be telling him how to deal with the toxin sacks. Now he's dead. Only Wintermute could do that now. That shouldn't be a problem, except for the second part. Wintermute has demonstrated a pattern of death. The child that retrieved the key for Wintermute was killed to ensure the location would never be known by anyone else. Armitage is tossed away since Cordo is of no use to Wintermute now. And Molly's job inside the Tessier Ashpool home 
includes killing Riviera. Riviera is no longer of use to Wintermute now that he's done what he's needed for the plan, and killing him is now further motivation for Molly to see the mission through. Having that kind of control is important, as demonstrated when Molly ignores Wintermute's directions and deliberately goes the wrong way during the mission, but it's worrying to think that the AI is killing people of no further use to it. Dixie is more aware of this problem because he isn't fully human, so he's more capable of understanding how inhuman an AI is than Case is. When Molly goes the other direction, it's out of curiosity, and it leads her to Ashpool. He's been awakened from a cryogenic sleep because of problems with the AI, but rather than solving it, he has resuscitated one of the Jane clones and had sex with her, despite being his daughter in a way, and kills her right in his bed. He wants to die, and Molly's view of the dead Jane is more than enough to allow her to oblige. Case is already disturbed, as Wintermute altered the Simstim to show the face of Jane as that of Linda Lee. Ashpool's behavior stems at least in part from the dreams that he has suffered during cryosleep, bad enough that death is preferable to facing them again, very Hamlet kind of reaction to the situation. Wintermute's manipulation helps Case go along with it, especially because Case realizes he doesn't see Ashpool as human in the first place, because power like his is the kind that he thinks of with faceless corporations. Ashpool, who is flesh and blood, has managed to become less human in Case's eyes than two beings, Wintermute and Dixie Flatline, who have not a trace of either. Thanks to this, and the manipulations of Wintermute with Linda Lee and the Wasp's Nest. But this ending for Ash Pool, this need for death, was caused by Three Jane deliberately inducing the dreams, which she could only do thanks to Wintermute. At this point, the unreliability for Case getting rid of the toxin sacs is worrisome, but the leverage at the moment is Molly. Case wants to ensure that she makes it out alive. This is likely also a deliberate manipulation by Wintermute. The story that Molly had told to him was of her previous lover, Johnny Mnemonic, as in the Keanu Reeves movie, who was eventually killed by a Yakuza assassin. Molly's attraction to Case is related to what she had with Johnny, and with Linda Lee lost, Case doesn't want to have this lover die as well. As the story is unfolding, we're seeing further facets revealed to what had seemed like far simpler things. Even the professional pride that Molly spoke of for herself isn't all that there is. Hideo, the assassin who killed the man who stole the bust, is just like the assassin that murdered Johnny. Facing him is a form of payback for Molly. As for the professional pride part, we can now see that it is because she must be the best if she can defeat someone who's like Hideo. The professional pride was all about this confrontation. However, Molly is still not fully healed from her broken leg, and those cloned assassins are legendary. She knows this is almost certainly going to end in her own death, but it's something that she has to do. She's grown close enough to Case, though, to say goodbye to him through her sim stim. The simulation being real enough, but then... Illusion has been an important part of the story. When Molly arrives, Riviera has set up some illusions, including a particularly hypersexualized Molly, and soon uses them to distract her so that Hideo can capture Molly for Three Jane's amusement. Seems either Wintermute or Riviera anticipated the other's betrayal, because Riviera says that the mission is over, and smashes one of Molly's eyes. This is too much for Case, though, and despite all of his insistences on the Matrix being the real reality for him, he and Malcolm, and the Dixie Flatlines box, are going to be heading in to try to save Molly, which we'll cover in the final part of our look at Neuromancer. <laughs>